We will, we will rock you. All right, all right, all right. The name is Dale. I'm doing the review of the movie Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm also going to do a quick recommendation of Dead Devil Season 3 on Netflix. This review and recommendation is done on behalf of Audio Liquor Mag, Audio Liquor Magazine. All right, I'm going to start off with Bohemian Rhapsody. This movie is about the rock band called Queen. It chronicles their start, how they formed the band in like 1970, all up until their legendary performance at the Live Aid concert, which I believe, which, is, which was in 1985. So this two and a half movie, or a little under two and a half movie, crams like 15 years within that uh, time span. So, it also focuses more on the lead singer, Freddie Mercury. And I first became aware of the rock band called Queen in like 1980. I was under 10 years old. I know I'm telling my age. I'm getting old, but I'm not that old. And my mother bought the album. She bought their album, The Game. And she bought it on the strength of their single, Another One Bites the Dust, which is another classic song that they made. And my mother would buy, always buy records on her payday. And she mostly bought black music, black artists, you know, like soul, R&B, funk. But every once in a while, she would buy a Hall & Oates or a Kraftwerk. And she bought Queen. And the album always stood out because she, from what I recall, never bought a rock album. So the album cover and everything just stood out and always stuck in my memory. You know, later on, as I got older, I became aware of other songs they made in their other albums. But anyway, a lot of people might know of their songs, but just are not aware of who made them. They made classic songs like the actual song Bohemian Rhapsody. You probably heard them say, open your eyes, look to the skies, and see, I'm just a poor boy. I can't sing, but that's that's in the beginning of the song, and they made legendary songs like Bicycle Race, We Are the Champions. They play that at a lot of sporting events, especially when someone actually wins the championship. That's a famous song that they made. They also did a song called Under Pressure. They did that with David Bowie, I believe, and that's actually sampled in the Vanilla Ice song, Ice Ice Baby, that doom 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 And what else they did? They did a lot of songs, so on and so forth. The list goes on and on. And I believe his name is Rami Malik. He's the guy that play. He's the actor that plays Freddie Mercury, and he play, And he's before this, he was known for playing on his TV series called Mr. Robot, and he does a great job playing Freddie Mercury. If he should get an Oscar nomination, that's how well his performance was. And the casting for the rest of the band is spot on. They look just like the actual band members. And the movie goes into Freddie Mercury's sexuality, him having a conflict with it, him being in the closet for a moment, then coming out. The live performances in the movie are great. They would, to me, that's what makes the movie as good as it is. The studio sessions are, I, I dig the studio sessions, how they actually came up with the songs. Brian Singer is credited for directing this film. Brian Singer is best known for doing the X-Men movies. He did the first two X-Men. He did X-Men Days of Future Past. He also did X-Men Apocalypse. I first became aware of him, and I believe this was his first break. He actually did a movie called Usual Suspects in the 90s, which is a classic. That's in my top 10 favorite movies of all time. And he's also did a lot of other movies. But he got fired, I, I believe, when they... 
they did a bulk of the movie. They actually had made most of the movie when he got fired and brought in another director. And it was due to this controversy surrounding a lawsuit claiming that he sexually assaulted a 17-year-old at a party in 2003. He denies it. I don't know all the details. Sasha Baron Cohen was supposed to play Freddie Mercury when this movie got the green light in like 2010, I believe. And he left the movie due to creative differences with the actual band members that band members that are living. They are heavily involved with the making of this movie. He wanted a rated R version. They wanted a PG-13 version. I would have been very interested to see the rated R Sasha Baron Cohen version of this movie, this film. And I also got a kick out of my wife watching this movie when we was in the theater because I got the impression without her saying, like, why are we seeing a movie about a rock band? But then when she recognized all the songs and she was like, oh, they did that. They came up with that. So she really liked the movie. So you're not just getting my review of the movie. She also enjoyed it too. And you know, you hear people talk about stadium music and stadium anthem. Queen embodied making stadium anthems. They were their they were their embodiment of that. Their music has the crowd in the palm of their hands. And you see this in the movie. And I think Freddie Mercury is probably the best lead singer of a rock band. Of a rock band. That's just my opinion. So I really like this movie. I give it a B plus. I was leaning towards an A minus. I think this is one of the movies I'm going to enjoy the second time around. So go see it. I highly recommend it. Now I'm going to give you a quick recommendation. If you've seen the first two seasons of Daredevil on Netflix and you like them and you haven't seen the third season yet, what's taking you so long? You got to watch it. It's better than the first two seasons in my opinion. Netflix just canceled Iron Fist, which was no surprise to me. I didn't like the first season. Man, a lot of other people didn't either. I heard the second season was an improvement. I watched the first episode of the second season and it seemed like it was going down the same dull, boring road that didn't really interest me. But now that they canceled it, I'm going to go back when I get time and actually watch the second season to see if it actually was an improvement. And it was no surprise when they canceled that, but I was shocked when they canceled Luke Cage. I enjoyed the first half of the first season of Luke Cage, second half not so much, and I thought the second season of Luke Cage was very solid. I was curious to see how the third season would play out, being that the last episode of the second season was so unpredictable. I didn't expect that ending to the second season, so I was very curious to see how they was going to take that storyline, where they, where they was going to take that storyline. So with all that being said, I'm kind of scared that they're going to cancel Daredevil. Disney, which owns these Marvel characters, is launching their own streaming service. So it's some rumors and thoughts that the reason why Iron Fist and Luke Cage got canceled is so they can bring them over there and do series over there on their streaming service. So I'm hoping they don't do that with Daredevil or Punisher because I, I have a feeling if they do, it will be very watered down on the Disney streaming service. I like the gritty, violent Daredevil that's on Netflix. That's where I wanted to stay. And Daredevil Season 3, Bullseye is the villain, one of the villains. And, the, and Bullseye is great. The fights between Bullseye and Daredevil are classic fight scenes awesome and Kingpin is great Vince D'Onofrio knocks it out the box as usual the guy the actor who plays Matt Murdock is better than he's ever been 
and you know a few critics love the this season of Daredevil three, but they but one that I respect a lot. He he really did not like episode ten of season three because they go into the backstory of one of the side characters, and I didn't have a problem with that. I would have had a problem with it if they had took the whole episode to go into this particular character's background. But they only did like 30 minutes, maybe a little over 30 minutes into this person's background. So I didn't have too much of a problem with it. But other than episode 10, uh, this season is damn near perfect. So binge it. Watch it. I'm done. I'm finished. Oh, I give season 3 a Dead Devil an A+. Plus. Yes, I'm giving it an A+. Plus. The fight with Matt Murdock in jail, I'm not going to spoil it. Whew. Man, I could watch that over and over. But anyway, I'm done. I'm finished. 